friends so in this session we will study the nth order of the reaction so rate is equal to k uh, to the concentration which power is n so if you take a product n a reactant n which uh, coefficient is n and it's giving product so you can write the rate is in this form so at initial when t is equal to 0 so this will be a this is 0 and after some time this will be x and this will be written as a minus x so rate will be equal to dx by dt in terms of differential rate like equation so it will be written as a k into a minus x to the power n so this is exponent n so rate can be written as this form and again if you write uh, if you want to write in the integral form so uh, take dx by a minus x to the power n uh, equal to k into dt and uh, limit of this uh, if you want to integrate it on integrating limit will be over 0 to t time and this will be 0 to initial concentration so on integrating you will get equation this one so i hope that uh, if you, you know the mathematics how to integrate all these things this integration so let me give you uh, some idea so let us assume a minus x is z so if you differentiate what will happen this will give you minus dx equal to dz or we can write dx equal to minus dz so if you integrate this one so you put here dx and this is a minus x is written as a z so z to the power n this is dx equal z so z power n so a minus x is minus so it will be minus here and k dt so dt will be your uh, this kt plus c this constant so if you differentiate uh, integrate this one so on integrating you will get uh, minus z to the power uh, uh, minus z into to the power minus n and uh, on integrating you will get this one on integrating this one minus z to the power minus n minus uh, based on formula and again of solve what is z z is nothing but the a minus x already we have seen this a minus x now you substitute this value substituting a uh, z a minus x 1 minus n this will be minus n plus 1 1 minus n this is 1 minus n so you will on rearranging finally you will get this answer this answer is nothing but this answer is actually this answer you can see so we have directly dragged from this list actually this is the full steps now here if uh, when uh, time is equal to 0 then x will be definitely 0 then c will be equal to this much so you substitute this value over here so you will get this equation and if you uh, take a kt and this is this side so this minus this so you just take 1 minus 1 divided by n minus 1 common so you will get this equation so again k is equal to t into n minus 1 and this equation so again uh, this is the equation of the nth order of the reaction so this is the equation of the nth order of reaction okay so now if you want to take the half life of this uh, reaction if you want to find half life so for half life definitely x is equal to a by 2 so you substitute this value over here so on substituting this t becomes half so on uh, substituting what will happen so this uh, t half will become this side so you will get finally half p here put it so half means putting you will get this equation then finally this equation 2 uh, to the power uh, n minus 1 minus 1 divided by k to the n minus 1 into a to the power n minus 1 so all these are you can see is a constant quantity so t half is inversely proportional to a to the power n minus 1 so these three are constant all these three are just uh, constant quantities so only this is variable so if this is variable so t half will be inversely proportional to a to the power we can write here t half is inversely proportional to the a to the power n minus 1 so this is the uh, half life of the nth order of the reaction so you can see here so this is our equations and uh, if you arrange this one so 2n minus 1 and divide by k into n minus 1 8 or n minus 1 so ultimately you will get t half is to the 1 divided by 8 to the power n minus 1 which is nothing if you take constant this again this is proportional to 8 to the power 1 minus n so you can rearrange this into 1 minus n so this is the nth order of the nth order of reaction now how to uh, get the experimental determination of order of reaction so how what are the experimental determination to find the order of reaction so there are different uh, uh, methods so already we have uh, seen in uh, zero order first order so we'll see once again so following methods are determined to 
uh, you should determine the rate law expression or order of a reaction so one is the method of integration and this is nothing but the heat and drag method so using this method rate loss for different uh, order uh, order reactions the value of k is obtained so by this we obtain the k value and which gives the order of reaction if all the reactants are at the same mole concentration if all this all reactions in the, in all reactants if they have same molar concentration then the kinetic equation will be like this one so for zero order already we have solved that k equal to x by t for first order this is the equation for second order this will be equation for third order this will be equation and for nth order this will be equation this is the one method that is the method of integration so by this method we have already solved second is the graphical method method to find the experimental determination order of reaction so we will plot the sum graph like concentration versus time so some typical linear plots of the reaction of different orders are here so let us see so one is plot of rate versus concentration so we can write rate is equal to k into concentration to the power n so this is the integrated rate law expressions so where uh, we can take the if we solve it this is come under y equal to mx plus c so on solving when you get the linear equations already you can see the previous lectures so i have just drawn the graph this is the our concentration versus time so for concentration versus time so if you take this equation so you will get the get graph for zero order is this one downward direction slope is down for first order again slope is down this is the intercept and for second order again slope is positive slope is positive this is the theta so this theta is this is positive and this theta is also positive which is equal to nothing k plot for differential rate equation so again sorry again rate equation rate is equal to k to the uh, k into concentration to the power n so this is the rate versus concentration so in this cases again uh, for zero order it does not depend on the concentration but first and second or third order they depend on the concentration so this is the rate versus concentration we can also plot graph that is one is the plot of half life versus concentration so in this case what happens so half life is again depend on the concentration for the zero order but for first order it is independent and second or third order it is dependent so only in half life it is not depend for the first order it is parallel and for uh, zero order rate versus concentration is the parallel so this you to remember just to remember it and uh, i'm just repeating for zero order this half life is proportional to a we can compare from here for half life is independent concentration so this is the parallel and again it is inversely proportional to concentration so graph will go like this one the square of the concentration again half life is for nth order is equal to 1 by a to the power n minus 1 so this is the a 1 to the power 1 minus 1 a to the power 1 minus 1 so this is the inversely if it is directly proportional so it will come this power so in this cases t half will be proportional to a to the power 1 minus so this will go down direction and if you from this end first and second order so this is the first order graph and second order is it has a higher slope so here slope is higher for first order slope is lower so our third method is fractional change method so by fraction we can see uh, this one uh, equation order of the reaction so it is based on the relation that the time required for completion of definite fraction of nth order reactions so it depends upon the initial concentration as uh, t1 by n is proportional to 1 a to the power 1 minus n so let us take time required to complete the definite fractions are t1 t2 so we can write which initial concentration a1 a2 respectively so t1 is proportional to a1 1 minus 1 and t2 is 1 minus so if you divide these two equation so you will get finally this equation or this equation so 1 minus n and this become n minus 1 so if you take log so on taking log you will get this equation and again if you take the order outside so you will get finally 1 plus this equation log t1 uh, minus log t2 divided by log a2 minus a1 and if t1 and t2 are different half lives if these are different half lives then we can write n equal to finally this equation next method is vent of differential method so in this method the rate of reaction is observed at different initial concentration of reactants and the order of the and order of the reaction so for two different initial concentration let the rate of the reaction be r1 and r2 
at initial concentration C1 and C2 respectively. So R1 equal to K, C1 is the initial concentration to the power n and R2 equal to K into C2 to the power n. So if you divide these two equations, so you will get R1 by R2 this one. So if you take the log R1 R2, so you will get n equal to log R1 minus log R2 divided by, so this is the event of differential method. So our next method is Oswald isolation method. So Oswald gives this method Oswald in 1902. So it is applied for those reactions which involve more than one reactant. When the reactant is more than one, so it is applied for Oswald dilution method. And this is called as the isolation method. So as it in it in it all the reactants except one. All the reactants except one. We are not taking all the reactants, only one reactant, which is uh, called isolated reactants, are taken in excess, and then one by one we will find their order. So in this method, concentration of all the reactants are taken in large except one. So the concentration only one reactant will influence the rate as uh, as others are so much in action that there are practically no change in their concentration. So only one reactant is there, other reaction is concentration. So we won't take that uh, reactant because they are in excess. So reactant taken in large excess will be considered as a constant, just like the pseudo molecular reaction or pseudo zero order reactions. Pseudo, uh, uh, zero first order reactions. Uh, it's not zero order, like zero order or first order, it may be all. So consider the reaction like these three reactions are there, three reactants are there, M1, M2, M3C, so rate will be this one. And if you take B and C axis, if these two reactants are axis, then the rate law will be reduced to rate to the power K dash A to the power alpha. So what is K dash? K dash actually, this is the constant. So this will be constant, this is constant, this is constant. So it is depending only one reactant. Similarly, if you take the two sets of experiment in which the concentration of A are A1 and A2, while B and C are present in large excess, then we can write rate equal to K dash to the power A1, uh, A1 to whole alpha, and R2 will be K dash to the A2 to the alpha. So R1 and R2 will be K1 by K2 to the alpha, and from this uh, value of alpha, order with respect to A is determined. And this process is repeated with other reactant B and C. And one by one, we will find and order the reaction with each reactant is determined. So overall order of this reaction will be alpha, beta plus gamma. So this will give you the overall order of the reaction. First alpha, then you make constant B away. A and C will get beta, then we make constant A and B will get alpha. Then add it, you will get the overall order of the that particular reactions. Next is uh, method is initial rate method. So it is a convenient method to determine the exponents in a Rate law. It is better than the Oswald dilution method, Oswald sorry, isolation methods. So this method involves the determination of the order of the different reactions separately. So separately we can find like this one. So let us see how it is different from the Oswald isolation method. So in order to determine the order of a particular reactant, a series of experiments are performed in a concentration so that particular reactant is varied, where, uh, whereas the concentration of other reactants are kept constant. So in each step, Initial reaction rate is determined from the plot of concentration versus time. So what is initial rate? So initial rate is nothing but the rate at the beginning of the reaction. This is the rate at the beginning of the reaction. So it may also be taken as the rate over the first feasible and the smallest possible time interval. So from the data obtained in order to uh, with respect to particular reactant is calculated. So from the data we can calculate the order of the particular reactant. The same uh, procedure is then uh, repeated by uh, devising another set of experiments of the same reaction. So we take another set of reactions and we will do the same procedure in which the concentration of the same uh, second reactant is varied whereas those of others are kept constant. Then by a similar method as discussed above, the initial rate for different experimental uh, runs experiment runs, and hence the order with respect to second order is determined. Let us see examples. So if you are taking Suppose this reaction M1, M2, M3, this reaction it is giving you product. So initial rate is how much K to the power A into A to the power alpha, B to the power B and gamma, C to the power gamma. So in the first two set, concentration of A are taken as A1, A2 and concentration of B are C is kept constant like the previous Oswald isolation methods. In the first state, initial rate will be R1, so this is the A1 to the alpha and BC, so this is kept constant. We are not taking excess, this is just a constant with the equal concentration. 
in second set R2 so this will be different concept this will be constant so if you divide it you will get A1 by A2 so if you take the log on both sides so you will get uh, log R1 by R2 so this will be log R1 by R2 this will be alpha into log A1 by log A2 so finally you will get the alpha equal this much now second case out of the reaction with respect to A is determined in another two sets of experiment if you take B is taken as B1 and B2 and again A and C are kept constant so we will get the value of beta is determined so uh, let us see the summarized form of rate law expression for different reactions so this is a reaction order rate law expression integrated form so this will be helpful so is converted product this is 0 so here rate law will be rate equal to k into a to the power 0 and in integrated form x equal to k into t for this is uh, order a is converted products we can take the order half or fractional order so it will be this much and integrated will be kt into 2 2 into a to the power half minus a to the power half so this is taken as a this much you will take a to the product order of the reaction to 1 so rate equal to k into a and kt equal to 2.33 log 8 naught by a if you take the order of the reaction so it will be 2 a product so rate equal to k a square k t equal to 1 by a minus 1 by a naught for a plus b product second order if the uh, concentration is different so it will be like, uh, like uh, k into a and b and then k t will be 2.33 and a naught minus b naught log b naught a and a naught b if you take the uh, three reactant products and the order is three three order and the three a the rate will be k a q and again uh, k t will be in integrated form half one by a square minus one by a naught square initial concentration the square of the initial concentration and if you take the nth order which converted products so we'll get the order n and rate is equal to k a to the power n and you will get this equation so this equation that is the nth order of equation so this is applicable for all order except the when n equal to 1 so if you take n equal to 1 this becomes 0 so whole will be 0 so you don't take n equal to 1 for all order is possible 0 order you take uh,